Welcome back to the channel. I am once again up here at the beautiful Northern Arizona off-grid property. I got a few odds and ends things I want to get done while I'm up here just for the day. But before we get to that, let's just take a look real quick. It is very, very dry here right now. Look at the ground. It is cracked everywhere <laughs> because it is so dry right now. And these cracks, it's hard to tell, but like they're so big I can literally stick my hands in there. That's how big these cracks are. They go way, way down. It's very dry right now. It's that time of year where it's getting pretty hot and it hasn't rained here in a, in a while. Um, so yesterday I think it was in the low 90s during the day and then overnight the lows are in the mid 40s. So it's, it's that time of year where you have these wild, wild temperature swings and very little moisture and it's very dry so right now i'm gonna go ahead over to those two trees i planted i don't know a year year and a half ago and i'm gonna give them some water because they are very thirsty First casualty of my trip. <laughs> so I got here yesterday afternoon. It's quite warm inside the cabin. And if you've watched my videos in the past, you know I've installed a little LG window AC unit in the cabin. It keeps the place nice and cool and I was powering it from my solar, this yellow extension cord. Oh no, look at that. I was hanging it off the, uh... what? there it goes. Yeah, so forgot that was attached and I just destroyed it. <laughs> Damn it. Anyways. Let's get back to it.
All right, we're gonna let that fill up for a little while. Um, the days of me carrying five gallon buckets all the way down the driveway to my trees, those days are over because I now have a tractor. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put some water in there, get it up on, on the bucket here, and then uh, grab my little siphon pump in a bucket, and I'm gonna take it down to the trees. So the great thing about this water and where the tank I got it from over there is all that water from that tank is all harvested rainwater right off the power room roof. And I'm taking that rainwater and I'm putting it back into the ground, which is gonna help these little trees get established and hopefully last a little bit longer. So funny story, last night, it was probably about midnight, maybe 1 a.m., I walked outside the cabin to go to the bathroom, and I heard something rustling around in the tree just to my right, and it was large, and it scared the crap out of me, and let's just say I almost bought a cow. <laughs> I reached for my pistol, and it's all dark over there, but I could see the branches on the trees moving and big, uh, big uh, footsteps on the ground, if you will. And it was a lonely, big, dumb cow. 
<laughs> walked out of there casually. And uh, I was like, you know, <laughs> it got my heart rate going there for a second because you never know what, what's going to come out of the trees out here, especially at that time of night. Um, but uh, yeah, I almost bought a cow. All right, so I'm going to get some work done underneath this carport. But before I do, I want to show you guys a couple of things. If you're new to my channel, I have a very simple solar power system here. This, this whole property is off grid. So everything comes from the sun, goes into my little power room through a charge controller, charges my batteries in that box there, and then sends it to an inverter, which I have run to a uh, sub panel in here, and then the extension cord out to the cabin. Um, this is not a lot of solar power. So we've got 14 100 watt solar panels, so 1400 watts, but of course you never get that much into your system out of them. I've seen them get very close, but uh, never quite 1400. But uh, it's plenty for now. I will be upgrading in the future, but for now it's plenty to uh, send power to this room here and then onto my cabin. And if you can see, I'm using it, it still works. <laughs> it's just in pieces right now. I'm uh, cooling my cabin with this AC unit right here that is currently running off of my solar. So let's take a look and see what's going on in here. Sorry for the noise. We're at 13.6 volts. Currently bringing in 890-ish watts right now. Uh, so it's supplying power to the AC and it's also helping charge the batteries. So um, of course the AC cycles on and off throughout the day. So it's not always using, that thing uses about 600 and, what, what was it, 640 or 660 watts? Is what it uses to cool this cabin. And then the rest is dumping into my batteries right behind this room. So I really can just cool my cabin all day long here in the summer off of solar. Now, once it gets later in the day, like five, probably 6 p.m. when the sun is too far to, to produce enough power on the panels, it will start draining my batteries pretty quickly. My batteries are very old, lead acid, and uh, it's time to upgrade them to lithium so they don't, they don't hold the charge terribly long, but as long as the sun is out, it's not a problem. All right, let's go over here and take a look at these footers I did in the last video, last time I was here. If you guys didn't see that, go check that out. Here are the footers, and it looks like they, they cured nicely. They're re looking really good. No cracks, I like it. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna break out some tools, and I'm gonna go ahead and anchor these posts to the concrete. I just don't feel good about leaving them just sitting there like that. Because if you've seen some of my other videos in the past, you'll know we have some pretty pretty strong winds up here at times. And this thing is just a, it's not that heavy, really. I mean, I could, I could push up on that right now with my hands and lift this thing up. So I need to attach it to the ground, get some weight beneath it. Um, so this thing does not pick up under the uh, really strong winds that we have here from time to time. So I'm gonna work on that as well. I'm gonna go ahead and put just a couple of Simpson um, hurricane ties just to, on a couple of these, just so it doesn't, you know, I, those are just screwed in, toenailed in, and I don't, I don't trust it. So a couple of hurricane ties on there. And if I have any, I might put a couple of joist hangers up here. These are, these are anchored in pretty good, but it wouldn't hurt to have a couple extra up there. Ah, it just cycled back on. All right, let me get some tools out and I'm gonna get to work. All right, I have just about everything I need. These are the brackets that I'm gonna be using to anchor the post to the concrete. I've got myself the right concrete bit and some redheads. So I'm gonna take these brackets over to my little bench vise in the cargo trailer there 
and I got to pre-drill some holes for the concrete anchors. Kind of a mess in here and it's a little dark sorry
Oh yeah, that ain't going nowhere. All right, so that's basically what we did. We're working with uh, those L brackets there. Those went in pretty quick, pretty easy. And that post is secure. It, it's no longer going to, to fly away. So pretty happy with that. All right, I'm gonna spare you guys. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and complete the other two posts right here. Uh, but you guys get the idea. And then I'm gonna take a lunch break. So we'll see you in a little bit. All right, I'm back from lunch and I did go ahead and finish off these last two posts. Got those uh, the little brackets on there. So these things are solid. Right now, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put some brackets up here. I went ahead and found some of these right here. And they're gonna go up there like something like that, just to, just to tie those in a little better. I'd feel a whole lot better about it. And then I got these, these little hurricane ties right here. And those are gonna go uh, on each two by six to the four by four. Just to tie, tie everything together, basically down to the ground so this thing has no no chance of lifting when we get those really, really strong winds. So I'm gonna start over here and work my way that way.
All right, guys, we're all done with that. Worked out pretty nice. All right. I feel a whole lot better now leaving this thing up here. Uh, it's, I've been worried about it since I, my buddy and I built it. I, I've, I've posted videos before of the crazy wind here. Uh, one in particular, one time in particular, with my uh, solar panel rack that I used to have, used to have on top of the uh, shipping container there. We had some crazy wind and it picked the whole thing up like it was light as a feather and tossed it over the side. And that thing's pretty heavy, <laughs> uh, probably a couple hundred pounds. So, um, yeah, I feel a whole lot better about this now. This this thing isn't going anywhere now. Um, I was thinking about the joist hangers up here. I don't think it's going to be necessary. Uh, that that ledger board is well well attached to the cabin. Sorry, guys. It's well attached to the cabin. And although all these two by sixes are just toenailed into the ledger board, the plywood on top, which is attached to the two by sixes and the ledger board, uh, it really ties this whole thing in. That's not coming off the wall. So I don't have to worry about that. I think this thing is done for the most part. All I really need to do still is just dump some dirt in here just to bring it up to the level of those concrete footers to the top of them and then that's it pretty much done but uh, I'll do that on a different day I'm not gonna do it this trip out uh, the next project that I would like to get working on is going to be finally the door the door on the power room so if you're not familiar with the channel or been following along I put this, this door used to be here. I custom, custom fit it to go in this space because this is a custom built little room and I didn't build my uh, rough opening to the uh, standard size of a, of a door. So I had to trim this and this was a leftover door that I had purchased to redo the interior doors at my house. And it was just uh, one that didn't get used and ended up in my garage and it got kind of nasty and it wasn't gonna be good for uh, inside a house at that point, but I didn't want it to go to waste so I went ahead and put it on here and it's, that's where it's been for, I don't know, the last, what has it been now? Six, seven, seven years? Something like that. Um, anyways, it's, uh, it's not meant to be outside and poured on and snowed on, so it's uh, basically falling apart, but I've been just plugging this big hole with that door and just putting some strapping across it just to hold it in place each time I come and go and I'm getting tired of doing that and uh, yeah so I do have another door to put in here that I will have to trim to fit and then that I will have to route out the spacing for the hinges and then find a hole saw and cut a hole in it so actually I could just use the doorknob hole yeah that's what I'll do. Anyways, that's my next project that I'm going to get working on here in a little bit. First things first, it's getting warm out here. 85, 86 degrees. And that's not hot where I live down in the desert. But up here, it's, it feels different in this uh, high altitude. So 6,300 feet, that 86 feels a bit warmer. So I'm going to go inside and take advantage of my air conditioner. Okay, now it's time to start working on the power room door. This is the extra door that I have. It's a very old door that came out of my house. It was in fact my bedroom door and it's actually pretty heavy, pretty, pretty solidly built. Um, yeah, I know it's another interior door, but I just can't let them go to waste. And I was going to toss this out when I, when I replaced it. And, uh, you know, I'm a bit of a hoarder, I guess. And now I'm gonna put it back to use. So I need to trim the width of it just a little bit. It's actually a little bit short on the on the height side, about a half an inch, but I can I can fix that on the uh, door frame on the power room, but I need to trim 
alongside here and I'm gonna do the hinge side. So I'm gonna take these hinges off and then uh, we're gonna cut back about, I don't know, an, an inch and a half, inch and a quarter or so all the way along this side and then I'm gonna mark out where the hinges are on the door frame of the power room and then I'll route those spaces out so I can go ahead and mount the door in there. All right, let's take a look at our cut and see what the side of this door looks like. So yeah, it is a hollow core door. So I'm gonna have to deal with that when I uh, do my hinges, but I think I can make this work. We'll see what I come up with. Good morning, it's the next day. And this is what I came up with uh, as far as strengthening the cut side on the door here. I went ahead and made my own little support in there. I really didn't have anything that would fit in there because it's kind of an odd dimension. This is between, between these two layers is uh, an inch and an eighth. So I ended up taking some uh, trim boards and I was just ripping them ripping them down to that size. And then I took two pieces and side by side, just glued them, glued these together and then screwed them in after I had them clamped for a while. And then I went ahead and put them in here. And as you can see, I, I glued these, the layers to the little pieces of trim. And then I screwed them down in the spots where I didn't have clamps just to help tie it together. I'll end up taking these out, but uh, yeah, that's where we're at on the door. Now I got to figure out how to get that door in place. I was test fitting it yesterday and it appears that my door frame's just a little bit out of square, but it will fit. Just gotta figure out how to get it up in there and hold it in place so I can get it in the right spot to put the hinges on. So I'm gonna have to get a little creative. We'll see what I come up with. I may end up using the speaker to help hold the bottom of the door. All right, guys, we got it hung, the door. Um, this is what it looks like. It's not a not the greatest fit, but it will do for this little building, that's for sure. So, the bucket ended up being just the right height to hold this door up for me. Closes, there's a little bit of rubbing right down here at the bottom. Um, I'm gonna give that a couple of opens and closes over time just to find out where, where it's rubbing the most. And then I'll just go ahead and trim that little corner there. Other than that, it works, works pretty darn good and it's solid. Nice. All right, mission accomplished. My goals for this trip were to uh, stabilize the carport, put all the tie downs, the brackets on there, make sure that thing doesn't float away in the wind. And I got all that done and getting this door to work. That was my other goal. And uh, if I had any time left over, I was gonna work on a little project right over there, but I'm not gonna have time to do it because I wanna get out of here within the next couple of hours. 
So right now I got to eat some lunch and then I got a whole bunch of stuff to clean up and pack up. Just a big mess over here. Um, yeah, so, ah, mission accomplished. I, I love coming up here and getting done what I set out to get done. So it, uh, it's a good feeling. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Um, if you haven't already watched the video on how I did those, go ahead and check that out. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. If you're still here, thank you for watching the video <laughs> through to the end. And uh, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. And if you like what you saw here today, uh, even just a little bit, give it a like if you would, please. All right, it's going to do it for this one, guys. You guys take care. Be safe. Have a great rest of your month. And I'll see you in the next video.